So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have the Samsung Galaxy wearable app installed on our phone. So let's go ahead and open that up. So now this is the home screen of the wearable app. You can see we're already connected to the Galaxy Watch 6. And one of the first things that I like to do is rename the watch. So what you can do is go into watch settings and we can scroll down and go to about watch. And if you want to customize the name so that when you're using your different devices, the watch is easily identifiable. All you have to do is click on edit. And as you can see, you can put in here whatever you want. Another thing I like to do as soon as I get the watch is make sure that it's up to date on the latest software. So again, you can go into watch settings and we're going to scroll down and we're going to go watch software update. And what you can do is click on download and install and it's going to check for any updates. As you can see, we are up to date on the latest software, so we're good to go. Now, another thing that you can change in here is the auto update option. So I actually recommend keeping this turned off. That way, if they come out with a software update that might potentially have issues or make changes to something that you don't want it to change, you can choose whether or not you download and install that update. So that's something to consider in here as well. So now that we actually have the watch in hand, let's go ahead and scroll down and go to our quick panel and let's click on the settings icon. So another thing I like to do shortly after getting the watch is go into security and privacy and set up a password. So if we click on lock type here, you can choose between a pattern or a pin. I typically prefer the pin, it's just easier for me to use. So we can go in here and set that up. And you also have this option in here to unlock without tapping after the pin is entered. I recommend, you know, having that selected. It just makes the process easier. So now let's go ahead and click set pin and you can choose what you want that pin to be. So now we have the pin set. This way, if we lose the watch, you know, nobody can just find it and get into it, especially if you plan on using things like contactless payment. So you have some other options in here as well. For example, the hide information option. Uh, so basically when the watch is locked, you can make sure that it doesn't display any personal information. So if you had the watch sitting down somewhere, maybe on a desk and someone else picks it up, they can't really see any of your information from the lock screen. So I do like having that turned on. Now, if we scroll down, we also have the option of wrist detection. And I like having this feature turned on as well. Basically, if you're not wearing the watch, for example, you just have it sitting on a nightstand or a desk, your notifications won't appear. So that is an option that can help you save battery life. Now, if we go back into our settings and go to display, another feature that I like to change is the adaptive brightness. I actually prefer to have this feature turned off. I much rather just control the brightness myself. I feel like that's another feature or a step that you can take to help preserve the battery life even more. Otherwise, the brightness is going to be constantly changing when you go from indoors to outdoors. Now, also under the display tab, you have the always on display if that's something that you want and you have the raise wrist to wake option. So with the raise wrist to wake option, say that five times fast, anytime you simply go like this with your wrist while wearing the watch, it will turn the watch face on so that you can quickly see the time or check your steps or anything of that nature. So if that's something you want turned on, you can access that right there. Now, I prefer the touch the screen to wake. Um, that's just easier for me. And it prevents the screen from turning on accidentally from just, you know, moving your wrist throughout the day. Now, if we continue to scroll down, uh, you can also change the screen timeout option. So the default is 15 seconds. I actually changed mine to 30 seconds. So it gives me a little bit more time before the screen times out. And then if we keep going, you can actually change your font style. So you can see the one that I have selected is the rosemary option. I think it looks a little bit nicer than the default. And if you just click that there, you can see you have a handful of different uh, font styles that you can choose from if you just want to personalize the look of the font a little bit more. Now, another option you have is this bold font option. So that just makes the text a little bit thicker and makes it easier to see. 
um, if you're having trouble, you know, seeing it. And I like having that feature turned on as well. So we'll leave that turned on. And then you can also control the font size. So if you want to make the size bigger, again, if you're having trouble seeing the text on the screen, you can make these adjustments in here and just really customize the way that the font looks on your watch. So very, very helpful stuff. Now, if you go back to the display tab, you also have this touch sensitivity option. So if you turn this on, that is going to increase the sensitivity of the touch controls on the watch. For example, if it's winter time and you're going to be wearing gloves, this is actually going to allow you to use the watch with gloves so that, you know, you can keep your hands warm, but still make use of your watch. So that's a very helpful feature in here under the display tab. So now let's go back to the settings and this time let's go to the health tab. And something that I like to do is make sure that the heart rate and the stress detection is set to manual only. So this is only going to check your heart rate and your stress levels when you manually initiate it to do so. Otherwise, it's going to do it periodically throughout the day. Uh, but for me, I'm not really buying the watch primarily for the different health metrics. So it works for me to have this set to manual. Otherwise, if that's your main concern, the different health metrics of the watch, then you can leave those to the designated intervals that they choose. But again, for me, this is just another way to help preserve my battery life. So also under the health tab, if we go ahead and scroll down, something that I think you should have turned on is the auto detect workouts. So basically the watch will automatically detect if you are working out. So if you're going for a walk, and the watch senses that you've been walking for a while, it's automatically going to detect that so you can track your distance um, and the time that you spent walking and all of that fun stuff. Uh, same thing for these other types of exercises as well. You can see it's got running, cycling, elliptical, and this is just a great way to automatically track your workouts so that you don't always have to do it manually. Something else that's really helpful under the health tab, if we scroll down, is the inactive alert setup or schedule setup for the inactive alerts. So basically the watch will notify you if you've been sedentary for too long and it'll encourage you to get up and start moving around and become more active. And you can control the schedule for these alerts. So you can see, you can go in here, you can change the time uh, as well as the days of the week. If you wanted to do this Monday through Friday or seven days a week between nine to five, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can do that. Or if you just want it active all the time, you can do that as well. But it's a very helpful feature and it is something that does come in handy. Uh, for example, when I'm editing these videos and I'm sitting at a desk for long periods of time, it is nice to get that little reminder to get up and stretch and just move around and, you know, be a little bit more active throughout the day. So let's go ahead and go back to our settings. And now let's go to safety and emergency. So one thing that you can do is add any relevant medical info to your watch. And once you click on that, it'll actually have you add this information on your phone through the wearable app. And this is useful. Uh, for example, if you have certain medical conditions and if there was ever an emergency, uh, maybe you passed out or something like that. And when first responders get to you, they can look at your watch and see any medical conditions that you have that way they can better and quickly assist you. So that's just uh, something to consider for sure in case of an emergency. Another option you have is your emergency contacts. So in case of an emergency, you can have your contacts in here that you want to reach. As you can see, I have my wife and uh, for now that's all I have. But if you had other contacts that you wanted to enter in here as well, you do have that option. So if we go back again, you also have this emergency SOS option. So if you hit the home button a total of five times in a row, that will trigger an emergency SOS. And you can see, you can control the number that the watch will call in case of an emergency. I have mine set to 911, but if you wanted to change that to one of your emergency contacts, you could do that. Now, if you scroll down, you also have this option to share info with your emergency contacts. So if you leave the designated number to 911, what you can do is turn this feature on and what will happen is that it'll actually send your emergency contact your location as well as an SOS message. 
So now if we go back, another feature that I recommend having turned on is the hard fall detection. So if your watch detects that you have fallen really hard, so for example, maybe you're up on a ladder and you fell off, your watch can automatically call whoever you designate. As you can see in this case, I have mine set to 911. But if you want it, you could change this to an emergency contact. Now, another option you have is when to detect the falls. So if you want, you can have it detect falls only during workouts. Um, so if you're a very active person throughout the day, if you have that turned off and you have it to detect falls all the time, it might incidentally trigger an emergency SOS when you don't necessarily need one. So that's something to consider. Um, if maybe you're an elderly person that's not very active, in that case, you might want to have it set to detect falls at all times. So now let's go ahead and go back to our main settings and we are going to go to advanced features. So in here, something that I like to change are the buttons or actually I like to customize the buttons, I should say. So if we click on customize buttons, you can choose some different actions if you double press and press and hold the home button. And you can also change the action that takes place with the back button. So for me, with the double press of the home button, I actually have it set to open my Google wallet. Um, so if I'm at the store or something like that, I can quickly access the contactless payment and I can pay for whatever it is that I'm purchasing. But as you can see in here, you can pretty much set this to open whatever app or do whatever action that you want. So that's very, very useful. And then also for the press and hold, you can change that as well. I have mine to initiate the power off menu. So when I want to turn the watch off, I can simply press and hold that power button and then I'll have those options. So let's go ahead and go back to our main settings once again. And this time we are going to go to accessibility. So one of the features that I like to use in here is the magnification option. So with this, if you're on any screen, what you can do is actually tap the watch screen three times to magnify what you're looking at. So if you're having trouble seeing, or if you just want to zoom in a little bit closer, tap it three times and you can see that it zooms into the watch face and you can use two fingers to navigate and zoom in or out accordingly. And then to go back to the regular view, simply tap the screen three times once again. So let's go ahead and go back to settings and back to accessibility. And this time we're gonna scroll down and go to interaction and dexterity. So this has something called universal gestures. And this actually allows you to control the watch without even touching anything. So let's go ahead and turn this on. So now that we have the watch on our wrist, we're able to control it by doing things like rotating our wrist, making a fist, as well as touching our index and thumbs together. So let's go ahead and get back to the main screen. And then if we shake our wrist two times like that, you can see this yellow perimeter comes up. And now if I make a fist two times like that, it pulls up this menu here and I can actually navigate the menu by tapping my index and thumbs together. So I can go forward by tapping once, tapping again, tapping again. If I do it twice, it actually goes back. So let's go to apps here and then to make a selection or hit enter, so to speak, I'm going to make a fist and you can see it pulls up the apps. Now to navigate the apps, I can use my index finger and my thumb. So we'll tap it, tap it again, and you can see it cycles through the different apps as I touch my fingers. So now if I want to open one of these again, I make a fist and it pulls up the app. So this is just a really cool way that you can control and navigate the watch without even touching anything. So those are a few of the tips and tricks that I like to use personally. Hopefully you found this video to be helpful. If so, do me a favor, consider subscribing as well as hitting the thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel. Aside from that, appreciate you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.